Hello everyone, Andrew here, and welcome to my Nintendo Game & Watch video. Uh, there's just a little bit of a preview of all the different Game & Watches we're going to be looking at today. Uh, we're doing this video a little bit differently. I'm behind the camera, I'm going, I'm going to be holding things in front of it, so I figured that would be how uh, everyone could get the best view uh, of the Game & Watches that I own. Game & Watches, for people who don't know, are little portable handheld consoles uh, that were produced by Nintendo uh, between 1980 and 1991, and they, they contain a single game uh, and also a clock function but no one really cares about that. Everyone just cares about the, uh, the neat little games on them. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be looking through that today. Uh, there were 61 Game & Watches produced, if you include a special edition Super Mario Brothers that was given out uh, in Japan as a prize for a competition, and if you include uh, the re-release of Ball through Club Nintendo, which I, I kind of think that's cool, because as you'll see as we're looking through it, there were kind of a few re-releases uh, anyway. Like, uh, saying that there were 61 releases doesn't mean that there were 61 different games. Sometimes there are uh, the same game, but the, the Game & Watch itself is actually a little bit different. So if you include those uh, those kind of special editions, uh, there are 61 Game & Watches in total. If you don't, there are uh, 59. Uh, I in, I own the, the, um, the Club Nintendo Ball. So if you include that, I have 27. Otherwise, I have 26 uh, unique Game & Watches. So I almost have half of the collection. Uh, without further ado, though, let's turn our angle to the front here so that I can hold some stuff out and everybody and have a look at my Game & Watch stuff. Uh, we're probably going to be going through them rather quickly because, as I said, you know, 27 of them, it's going to take a little bit of time, so I don't want to spend all day on them. I have lined them all up in chronological order, though, so um, I, I kind of debated for a while how, how I uh, wanted to do it, like maybe through all the Mario ones and all the Donkey Kong ones, but I thought that chronological order would probably be the best. Uh, and the very first, uh, or the earliest, rather, Game & Watch that I own is Parachute, which is actually Game & Watch number 9, uh, and it is part of the widescreen series. Before the widescreen series, there was also the uh, gold and silver series, and the difference with them is that they're a little bit smaller, and the game and time buttons were actually along the bottom, uh, the bottom rather than on the side, which was uh, what allowed them to make the screen a little bit bigger by relocating them. I also did not put batteries in all of the Game & Watches because, again, it would take forever to just kind of show you how all of them work. But basically, uh, this is how a typical Game & Watch uh, looks. You have buttons on the left and right, and you have Game A, Game B, and Time. Time allowing you to set things like the time and the, uh, the built-in alarm. But what we really ca uh, care about is the games here. Uh, game A uh, and Game B are for many Game & Watches, uh, very similar games, with the exception that B is usually a little bit more difficult, but uh, you just press the button, uh, and you can start playing. Parachute uh, is the Game & Watch game where people are, uh, you know, they're coming out of the helicopter, and you catch them in the boat so that they do not fall into shark-infested waters. Uh, and Game & Watch games are very basic. All the kind of uh, positions of the sprites are all predetermined, so there's not usually any uh, huge surprises during gameplay. I'm actually doing pretty well considering I'm watching the screen of the Game & Watch through the screen on my camera. Um, but basically, uh, there's, you know, there's not too much to see, like, it will start to go faster, and sometimes when you get, you get to, like, 100 points or 200 points, different things will start to happen. Actually, in many Game & Watches, once you get to, uh, 200 and 500 points, you get a 1-up, but that's all, uh, it's different, you know, for every Game & Watch. They're all the same, there's not necessarily a kind of streamlined thing for that, but yeah, as you can see, you know, we're getting up there, things are starting to get a little bit faster, um, and if you miss... And usually, uh, Game & Watches, if you miss three times, uh, you're out. Um, on the back here, most <laughs> they're very loud. When um, uh, when you know, that should be three misses. So hopefully everybody can hear me now. Uh, this thing here allows you to actually set them up. Uh, so kind of like a clock. So I guess you know, you can put um, you know, like on your nightstand if you were actually using it as an alarm. But you know, it, it looks very nice when you set them up, uh, set them up on a shelf like that. Um, Game watches, pretty much all of them have the same sized battery cover. And if you don't have that, let me just uh, pop this off here. So if you don't have that, the batteries won't stay in. I guess you could probably use, you know, tape or something like that, but if you're ever uh, looking to buy a Game & Watch and you don't have that battery cover, it will be very difficult uh, for your two batteries to stay in there. So keep that in mind, that having the cover is very important. Although I have seen people, uh, I think, either, you know, reproducing them uh, online because it's, it's, very, it's a very simple piece of plastic, you know. The 3D printers that are out there today uh, can pretty much do that. Um, but just keep in mind that you will want to have a battery cover if you buy your Game & Watch in order to keep the batteries in. Uh, for many of the Game & Watches that I own, or at least a few of them, I do have the box as well, which is really neat just to see, you know, how the boxes look. And as I said, this was one of the widescreen ones, uh, with the gold and silver ones coming before it. So that is Parachute, Game & Watch number 9, released in 1981, uh, the earliest Game & Watch that I own. 
uh, jumping a little bit ahead now, also in 1981, however, uh, is Fire. And I figured this one, I'd actually unbox it on camera so you could kind of see what the inside of a Game & Watch box, looked like, uh, box looks like. You have a nice piece of styrofoam. When you slide that out, you have your Game & Watch. The styrofoam has a hole in the bottom so you can push it up through that with your finger. And there's also a little instruction manual in there as well. Uh, Fire, again, you know, the, 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 you know, this is another widescreen one, so the basic design is much like parachutes with buttons on left and right. Um, and your buttons up there at the top fire, you are, of course, you know, um, catching people who are jumping out of a burning building on kind of a trampoline and trying to get them into the ambulance over there. So that is fire, number 15. Uh, I gotta be very careful here. If I dropped any of these during the video, it would be kind of disastrous. Um, alright, next up is number 16, which is Turtle Bridge. Uh, this one was released in 1982, and we have the box for this one as well. Uh, advertising other ones on the back. Don't have all of those, uh, but it's still very cool. And Turtle Bridge with the point being trying to get uh, from one side to the other. Crossing a bridge of turtles who will sometimes dive down into the water, and uh, it can be kind of kind of crazy. But again, uh, very similar back. Uh, I, I really like Turtle Bridge. Turtle Bridge is definitely one of my favorite game and watches. It's a very good game. Uh, next up! The 18th Game & Watch is Snoopy Tennis, another one which I own the box for. Another one, another widescreen one. Uh, many of their boxes were fairly similar. No advertising on the back of that one, though. Not sure what went wrong there. Not they didn't advertise. This one's pink, and uh, it's Snoopy Tennis. Not too much to say there, except now we have you know more buttons here. Things are getting a little bit more complicated, and the back is, once again, very similar. Uh, up at number 20 is Donkey Kong. Now, this takes us to an interesting kind of area or era, or, you know, set of Game & Watches, where it's not just a basic screen anymore with two buttons on the side. Now we're getting into the multi-screen ones, and Donkey Kong, of course, you know, very iconic Game & Watch. Uh, and also, people will probably notice that it is very similar uh, kind of, to kind of the uh, design that the Nintendo DS eventually went with. We also have the introduction of the D-pad, uh, which would, you know, become one of Nintendo's greatest inventions and uh, would, you know, go on to appear on the NES controller and pretty much every other uh, Nintendo controller ever. Um, Donkey Kong, very good game. Uh, first time I ever played it was on Game & Watch Gallery 2, which I believe I mentioned, I've mentioned before, game, that the uh, Game & Watch Gallery games are great ways to play uh, Game & Watch games. They're a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so Donkey Kong was 1982, and it was uh, a multi-screen one. Uh, number, actually, no, sorry, 20 was Donkey Kong. Number 21 is Donkey Kong Jr., also released in 1982, although this time we are back to... Or widescreen. I should actually uh, show the box for this one first. My, my box has a little bit of damage, but the funniest part about this box is that one time, Electronics Bo uh, Boutiques, or uh, EB Games rather, uh, EB Games as it's known as in Canada, but I think I think it was originally a separate company, but then it merged with GameStop in the US, or something crazy like that. Basically, the equivalent of GameStop in the United States, or your typical you know new game, new video game store uh, anywhere in the world, sold this for twenty two ninety nine. So what people seem to fail to realize is that you know retro video games, game and watches, and all that. Uh, they weren't always extremely expensive. There was a time when the prices of these things dipped down. Like, you know, NES games uh, didn't, like, you know, they weren't constantly rising in price. After the NES, after the Super Nintendo came out, uh, S, uh, you know, the value of NES games started to go down as more people were buying SNES games. And the same thing happened when the Nintendo 64 came out. It wasn't until around when the Wii came out that retro games started uh, bouncing upwards again. Um, which is, you know, why they're so, uh, high in price today, and why people often ask me how I built up so much of my collection. It's because I bought a lot of my stuff when the prices weren't sky high as they are today. Uh, regardless, so this isn't a video about that. This is a video about Game & Watches, and this one is Donkey Kong Jr., another widescreen one, very similar to the other widescreen ones that we have looked at. A cool game, um, it, 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 uh, it most certainly is. Let's see, what is up next? Number 22 is Mickey and Donald, another... Multi-screen one. So yeah, Donkey Kong wasn't the only one that looks very much like a Nintendo DS. Mickey and Donald, and a few other ones as we're going to see, of course, also follow that. Interesting controls here. It's not a D-pad, but you have up and down on one side, and uh, left and right on the other side. Even these ones use a very similar, uh, actually the, uh, the exact same battery cover as the other games. Of course, uh, just the color is different. So even if you only have one of these, and say you have like three Game & Watches but only one battery cover, you could just interchange it as long as you know, you're not worried about collecting it in complete condition. You're more just worried about actually you know, being able to play the games. As long as you have one battery cover, you're going to be good. Uh, Greenhouse, next up, 1982 as well. Greenhouse is Game & Watch number 23 uh, in you know, chronological order. 
another multi-screen one. Uh, you know, gotta exterminate all the bugs. You know, spray the bug spray on all the different plants before the, the spiders crawl down and get to your flowers. Uh, Game & Watch games, very, uh, you know, they have very basic premises in most cases, but they're still a lot of fun. And they're most certainly uh, fun to collect as well. And they just look so nice, too. They're, they're just awesome pieces. They are really, really, really cool. Uh, number 24 is Donkey Kong 2, released in 1983. Um, and it is, once again, a multi-screen one. Interesting. You know, I, I always, as a kid, looked at it. I'm like, what happened to Donkey Kong 2? Why does it go Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., and then Donkey Kong 3? But there actually was a Donkey Kong 2 Game & Watch. And, I mean, people often say, you know, Donkey Kong Jr. is Donkey Kong th uh, Donkey Kong 2. Uh, but then, you know, where does that come in? You know, this is Donkey Kong Jr., and this is Donkey Kong 2. So, you know, maybe they're not necessarily the exact same thing. You know, that's what people would always say. People had no idea what they were talking about. Much like myself, who, uh, you know, I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about but um just like donkey kong jr it's about you play as donkey kong jr where you're getting a key and trying to get it back up to the top so that you can release uh donkey kong who has been captured i, I don't know if it's uh, if the canon is that it's actually mario it's it's a character that looks a lot like mario i forget if it's i don't think their their name is actually mario though like i mean of course you know in the original donkey kong mario was Jumpman. um but basically i think uh you know the canon is that you know, it's Mario versus Donkey Kong, basically, as it was established in the Donkey Kong on the Game Boy and uh, Donkey Mario vs. Donkey Kong, of course, on the Game Boy Advance. Um, so that was number 24. Number 25 is Mario Bros. This one is interesting because it is, once again, a multi-screen Game & Watch, but unlike uh, the other ones, which open like a DS, where you had a screen on uh, one on top of the other, this one opens to the side, and you actually have two screens, uh, one on the left and one on the right. And uh, this one you play as, uh, you know, Mario on one side and Luigi on the other side. And you send the package back and forth. Um, and then, uh, you know, like, Mario will have to be there to grab it and then put it down onto the next level before it falls off the edge. Again, it's a very simple premise, but it gets, uh, you know, very fun. And, of course, you have game A, game B, and time once again. And, you know, so, yeah, so Mario's on that side. Luigi's on that side. And, again, this, you know, up and down. <laughs> the only controls needed, but they're still very fun games. Um, I'm, let's see, where should I put these? <laughs> I'm, I'm debating where to put things back down when I'm done with them. So that was Mario Bros. Number 25. Uh, number 28 is Mario Cement Factory. Uh, somewhat similar, but we're going back to the widescreen format. Mine's not in the best shape. You can see a bit of a scratch there, but uh, still... Very cool to own. You know, Mario had a lot of jobs. You know, he, he was a cement factory guy. He was a plumbing guy. He was a carpenting guy. Mario was a lot of things. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I mean, he still becomes a lot of things these days. You know, like a doctor and all that. So it's, it's kind of funny, you know, like looking at all the different jobs that Mario has had. Uh, so yeah, that was 1983. Game Watch number 30 is Rain Shower, which is once again one of those ones that opens to the side, which is just so cool. You know, they, they could have easily just made, you know, 60 of these, but the fact that they actually looked for, you know, different ways to make them is just really neat. And this one is all about, you know, getting your clothes across the clothesline before the rain completely drenches them. You know, you couldn't just, you know, put them back out again once the dra uh, once the rain is over. You know, as you, you wash them in the first place anyway, so it's not like they can't get wet. But again, just very basic, you know, you know, left side of the house, right side of the house, and, you know, just, just or, you know, moving things left and right. It, it's just, it's very, very basic, yet very fun. Um, game watches are just so neat. Let's see, so that was number 30. Uh, then we do a big jump in time, up to number 35. Uh, Donkey Kong Jr., but this is a panorama game of watch. It's another kind of one of the different ones. Um, not the same as the Donkey Kong Jr. from before. That's what I mean, like... Uh, there's two, you know, there can be various uh, versions of the same game. So, like, there's various versions of Super Mario Brothers, and there's, like, a fire um, in the, you know, gold-silver series, but there's also a fire in the widescreen series. Well, in this case, we have Donkey Kong Jr. Panorama, and I kind of want to show this one. I think I'm actually going to put batteries in this one and show all of you. Uh, this is just really, really, really weird. So, I'm going to put batteries in that, and we'll cut back in a second. All right, here. So, when we open this up, you'll see... Now you can actually kind of see in the screen in there. Okay, it's going, to, it's going to be very tricky to actually show everyone this. So let's see, if we press game A. The interesting thing about the panorama ones is that you actually have color now. Because as you probably noticed with, you know, Parachute, uh, Game & Watch games were typically black and white. Now I'm playing this with one hand because I'm kind of trying to, try, uh, uh, trying to hold the screen in place with my other hand. But still, I definitely wanted to show this off. Very interesting. Game & Watches are just so neat, and I'm going to fail miserably because I am playing it. About to get destroyed by a bird. <laughs> but see, that, that that's really cool. I, I, I just love how there's so many different kinds of Game & Watches. They're so neat. 
it's worth noting though that that game, if you know, you compare it to the Donkey Kong Jr. Hero, I mean, it's not the exact same game. Like the layout, the idea is the same. You know, rescuing, playing as Donkey Kong Jr., rescuing Donkey Kong. Uh, but the game itself is actually different. But if you just like looked at the list of Donkey Kong uh, of uh, Game and Watches, rather, you might say, you know, why are there two different Donkey Kong Juniors uh, or something like that? So that's why you definitely need to, you know, be aware of the differences that exist within the Game and Watch universe, despite the fact um, that if you're looking through a list, the names might be exactly the same. Uh, so that was number. Where am I on my list here? That was number 35. Uh, Panorama Donkey Kong Jr. released in 1983, and we're not even halfway through my list. Or actually, we might just be about approaching the halfway point. The majority of my Game & Watches are actually from the later years. Um, I definitely wanted to get more from the early years, especially some from the Gold and Silver series. But after Donkey Kong Jr. comes Lifeboat, number 36. Released in 1983. This is, once again, one of those um, you know, sideways multi-screen ones. And it again reminds me a lot of Parachute, except now a little bit more complex, but you still have those basic you know, left and right buttons that Parachute have, which is pretty cool. Number 38 is Pinball. Now, Pinball, I mean, you probably don't need too much of an explanation. Pinball, uh, Game & Watch Pinball is not too different from, you know, the Pinball I'm sure everybody knows uh, very well, but it is interesting, you know, playing it on the LCD screen here. Uh, it, it's a very cool game, but again... You know, just, just basic controls. Game & Watch games were very frequently, you know, very simple and not complex. And Pinball, once again, another game that fits the bill perfectly. Uh, so that's number, I think I said, 38, yes. And we're going to do a little bit uh, of a jump again to number 43, which brings us to another interesting set of Game & Watches, and that is the Micro Versus system. As we can see on the box here, and as I will show you, the Micro Versus games, uh, they flip open, they have a screen here, but you have two controllers so that you can actually play against a friend, but you can also play on your own against the computer as well. And this one is Donkey Kong 3. And there, it's, it's, it's spoiling everything. So you got this thing right here, and I'm just going to be very careful because I'm sitting behind the camera and I'm a little bit scared of dropping something. So you flip that open, and you have your two controllers inside their numbers. So like this is controller one right here. And you would just pull that out. Uh, and in this case, game A, um, would be against the computer. Actually, darn it. It's been a little while since I played it with someone. I, I forget if game A is against the computer and game B is multiplayer, or if game B is, um, the, the computer and game A is multiplayer. Either way, you'll figure it out eventually once one of the controllers isn't working. Uh, but yeah, that's just a really cool idea, and it's just another thing, like, you know, th that's so neat. That is so neat. And Donkey Kong 3 is kind of like a mix of, you know, it's like Donkey Kong and Greenhouse had a really bizarre baby. As you know, you can see the guy there with the exterminating thing, and you see Donkey Kong there with the exterminating thing. I think it's basically Donkey Kong versus that guy. It, it's it's a it's a really bizarre game, but you just, you, you just have to experience it. You know, at some point, playing a micro versus system with a friend, it is just so bizarre. Uh, another micro versus system is Donkey Kong Hockey. I'm not sure who saw ho who, like you know who, who said that Donkey Kong needed to be in hockey. Like it easily could have just been hockey, but no, they made it Donkey Kong Hockey. Uh, and this one is exactly well, it's not sorry, it's not the same game rather, but it is another micro versus system which once again opens up and has two controllers in it. And this is Game & Watch number uh, 45. Uh, it was released in 1984. There is one other Micro vs. System boxing, which I believe is number 44. It goes right in between my number 43 and 45. Uh, it is red. I'm not sure why they wouldn't have made it like Donkey Kong boxing, considering you know they made the other two Micro vs. Systems uh, Donkey Kong themed. Um, but that, I don't own that one, and I would like to get my hands on that someday. Because I think that the Micro vs. System is just the fact you know they have two controllers built in with the screen on the front. Like that's just such a cool idea. It is just awesome, um, and they're just again super neat pieces to own. Even if I don't have chances to play multiplayer with people all that often. Uh, number 46 on my list. Boy, I reach way over here. I place things a little bit too far away. But we're okay. Is Blackjack. Um, Blackjack, again, just like Pinball. Probably a game that needs no explanation for most people. Blackjack 21. Um, you know, got the, the poker table down there. And all that. It's basically... It's fairly simple. <laughs> but it's it's a cool game. I once again do one nonetheless. Um, next up is 48. Uh, released in 19, 1986, actually. So we're doing a two-year jump here because Blackjack was 1984. Uh, Squish is actually one of my favorite Game & Watch games. Squish is pretty cool. And I might actually put some batteries in this one to show everyone. But again, look at that. Up and down, left and right button. We've seen that control scheme in uh, you know, uh, other games before. I'll show you guys this one. So just give me one second.
All right there, so we got Squish. Uh, Squish is pretty cool, let's see. So we got our bottom screen there. What you do in Squish, uh, this one, the top screen is not super important. It shows like your misses and, uh, and things like that. But basically it shows which way the walls are moving. So like they're moving down right now. The point of Squish is to not get squished by the walls as I just did because I was showing the upper screen. But basically you move this guy here and yeah, so right now as I said, you know, the wall is moving downwards as it says on the top screen. So you just gotta keep moving and get away from the walls. But then the direction will change. So like right now they're moving to the left. Uh, it's just a really neat game. I, I, I've always liked this one. When you play mode B, uh, rather than just making it like more difficult, like the, it moves faster or something like that, uh, as you probably noticed, there's these little white areas on the top left uh, top right and you know all that and uh, there are there, uh, there's characters in there that you have to save within a certain amount of time so like you have to go there and you have to go all the way to the one on the right and you have to go all the way to the one on the bottom left and the bottom right uh, so it makes things a little bit more challenging which is pretty cool so it's neat that you know A mode and B mode can sometimes be different rather than just being uh, a more difficult version of the same game where things might move a little bit faster but I've, I've always liked Squish I mean probably probably not the most exciting game to watch <laughs> but it's still pretty neat uh, nonetheless I don't think it was ever featured in a Game & Watch Gallery game which is a shame the thing about Game & Watches though is that there's no way to turn them off. Uh, like you can still hear it. Even though the lid's closed. And the only way to get them to stop is either to wait for the battery to die or to take them out yourself. So, uh, there we go. Uh, that's, that's the one thing. I mean, there's no off button. There's, like, there's, you know, the clock is always going and it acts as an alarm. But there we go. You can use just as easily take the batteries out. In fact, that would definitely be recommended so you know, they don't end up exploding or, you know, why, why, why leave them in if you're not playing it. And you're not using it as an alarm clock, of course. I can't imagine too many people would probably use it as an alarm clock these days. Uh, next up, number 49 is Super Mario Bros. Crystal Screen Edition. This was actually the second Game & Watch I ever got my hands on. Donkey Kong was actually the first. Uh, both of these were from thrift stores, actually. A few of them were. Although in recent years, you just don't find them at thrift stores anymore. And uh, you're, you know, you're definitely going to be buying them off of people who have collected them in the past. Uh, box seen much better days. Uh, but it is super cool. The crystal screen. Super Mario Bros. And it's crystal screen is you can actually see through the screen, which is absolutely awesome. It's just, I, I love this. This is probably one of my favorite things in my collection. It is just so cool. Uh, and it is, it is Super Mario Brothers. I'm going to show you um, the other version of Super Mario Brothers. It's going, definitely going to show up better on the camera than a screen that you can see through. Um, but it plays a lot like Super Mario Brothers, except every level, uh, so yeah, every level is an auto-scrolling level with an ensuing wall of death. So you will see that. But if we look inside the, uh, the box here, despite the fact that it's beat up, it does have the book, which is super cool. And when it's in the box, I really like the way that it looks. Because it's, uh, you can see the Mario picture through it. <laughs> That's really cool. I, I really like my Crystal Screen Game Watch box. Not so great, but it's such a cool game nonetheless. And that was number 49. 52 is, sorry, as I reach way over into oblivion, is Bomb Sweeper. And this one has a box. Uh, yeah, so the um, multi-screen... Game Watches came in much bigger boxes to accommodate their bigger size. Uh, this box is super complete. Um, if we look inside here, um, I have pretty much everything. I think it's Mario that has it on the back. Uh, it's really interesting. I, I just have to show everybody this. This is funny. I, I guess these might have come, maybe not with every Game & Watch. This was probably kind of like the Wii wrist strap, where it wasn't like very secure at first, and then they released a secure version later. I'm guessing that babies must have been eating the batteries or something like that, because you got these red stickers. Is it going to show up? There. Place this seal over battery cover to prevent babies from removing and eating batteries. So, I mean, if you look on uh, Mario here, we haven't actually looked yet. Uh, someone actually did that, but then, I mean, when you have to change the batteries, you're going to have to break the seal. It's really dumb, but it's just funny that, you know, literally, babies are crazy and will eat the batteries if you do not place that on there. And then otherwise, we have an instruction book and all other sorts of cautions and things. Um, but yeah, Bomb Sweeper is a cool game, just like that, where you, uh, you have to, to defuse the bombs within the time of I like Bomb Sweeper. Bomb Sweeper is another very cool one, but let's just put that off to the side. Actually, I might just put that back into the box, because I don't want to accidentally drop it. Yeah, Bomb Sweeper is definitely one of my most mint condition and complete Game & Watches. It's a very cool game, too, so happy to have that. Uh, so yeah, that's Bomb Sweeper number 52, which was released in 1987. Now, number 53 can technically be the special edition Super Mario Brothers that was only released in Japan. Uh, I think there was 10,000 of them, and they were a prize for a contest. Um, so if you, if you count that as number 53, uh, number 54 is then Safe Buster. Where have I placed Safe Buster? That's a very good question. Safe Buster is over here. F Safe Buster is another multi-screen one. 
or sorry, Bomb Sweeper. Yeah, yeah, and Bomb Sweeper, basically, bombs drop down from the top, and you need to uh, dump them off into the kind of areas on the left and right so that the, the, the safe does not get blown up and broken into, as depicted from the front there. Uh, so that was number 50, uh, sorry, 54. Number 55 is the ordinary Super Mario Brothers. So see, that, that's interesting. Like, again, the same game as the one that we saw before, but now they re-released it, not in the crystal screen one, but in a widescreen one. I'm going to put some batteries in this one, because I'm sure people will be curious, what is up with a Super Mario Brothers Game & Watch? Of course, as I said earlier, uh, based on the production uh, timeline of Game & Watches, Game & Watches predate the existence of the Super Mario Brothers series, uh, Super Mario Brothers series, but even after the NES came out and the Famicom and all that, they still continued to make Game of Watches, and that's how you have ones like Super Mario Brothers. So let's see if I press Game. Uh, uh, that's a, that's the alarm button, not the time button. And this one has an alarm button, the time button, and the game button. It doesn't have a game A and a game B. So see, every level's not a scrolling level. Uh, well, revel level. And uh, because I'm trying to play this from, the, from my camera screen, I just died on the first pit of the game. Uh, that's it, everybody. I died in the first pit of the first level of Super Mario Brothers. But it's the Game & Watch version, so cut me some slack. Um, it's, it's hard to play while I'm, while I'm making a video. Um, but yeah, basically, yeah, as you can see, I, I'm not pressing anything. Every level is just auto-scrolling. You gotta jump like that. You gotta, you gotta be quick. But I'm trying to make a video and look at this through the screen on my uh, on my camcorder here, and it's not working so well. But yeah, basically the top is telling you your distance to the end of the level. Yeah, so every level is not a scrolling level, and it goes on like this. Of course, Game of Watches they don't typically have music, so the beeping could get a little bit old after a little while. But that's why we have you know phones these days and you know portable speakers. Just blast those tunes wherever you go. I mean, you can easily just you know blast the Mario One Dash One NES any, you know, music. If, you know, the, the beeping is just not doing it for you. And, uh, and yeah, this, this goes on. <laughs> for many levels, of course, you know, it's, it's not as interesting as, obviously, the real Super Mario Brothers is. But to be able to have this on the go, you know, before the existence of the Game Boy, you know, before Super Mario Land existed, there's a mushroom there. For some bonus points. I just will just beat this level. 11, 10, 9, feels like we're counting down the New Year's. 7, 6... Five. I like how you can even see like the red kind of hue on the sides too, just to emphasize, you know, the existence of the ensuing wall of death. And uh, we already have zero distance. There's the princess, and it's not, it's not even, it doesn't even try to troll you. Like it's not Toad. Like we literally just save the princess. I, I, this is just like I love Game and Watches so much, especially especially ones like Mario Brothers. Mario is just a cool Game and Watch. And that battery just fell on the floor and it is never coming back. Actually, can I potentially salvage that without messing up the whole video? Let's see. Aha! I got it. Yeah, these batteries will will fly all over the place. Okay, that is Super Mario Brothers. We're getting to the home stretch now. Putting those back. That was number 55, 1988, a new widescreen Super Mario Brothers. Uh, next up, number 57 is Balloon Fight. Balloon Fight, of course, being an NES game, uh, now turned into Game & Watch form, and it plays much like uh, the Balloon Fight on the NES does. Um, number 58 is Gold Cliff. Gold Cliff is definitely also one of my favorite Game & Watch games. Gold Cliff is really cool. Another multi-screen one. Where you play as a guy, you work your way up from the bottom, jumping on platforms and getting a key, and then you have to work your way up to the top, dodging obstacles along the way. Uh, it's a really cool one. I really like Gold Cliff. I find that a lot of my favorite Game & Watches are the multi-screen ones. Uh, but I mean, of course, there are some really, you know, great ones uh, on, like, widescreen, too. But I mean, of course, the earlier ones like Parachute, very basic. Um, and considering, you know, the games we have today, you might feel like it's a little bit repetitive after a while, but it's still a lot of fun. But I mean, even ones like Mario Brothers and Balloon Fight... Very, very, very cool uh, Game & Watches. Number 59, and if you don't include the Nintendo, the Club Nintendo re-release, this is the, uh, what is it called? The latest, I was going to say the oldest, but I guess technically the latest Game & Watch that I own. Let's move these off the screen here. And if I can come all the way around here to grab this. It's Zelda. It's not The Legend of Zelda, which I always thought was really interesting, which I, I totally don't blame people who think that the main character's name is Zelda, in the case where it's not even The Legend of Zelda, it's just called Zelda. Uh, but you have the Triforce on the front there, you have a, you know, a picture of what it's going to look like, but we're going to open it up anyway. We got Link there, fighting off a whole bunch of stuff. Another multi-screen one. Uh, the top screen is mostly stats and stuff, uh, while well, the bottom screen is where most of the gameplay happens, and it's actually a side-scroller, so, you know, despite the fact that 
I don't even think the Triforce is in Zelda 2. I mean, I've beaten Zelda 2 many times. Um, but I mean, of course, you know, the main focus of collecting all the pieces of the Triforce is, uh, The Legend of Zelda 1. Um, but yeah, despite the fact this game is actually a side-scroller, much more like Zelda 2 and the CDI games, which were everybody's favorite. Um, and yeah, it's just a very cool game. And again, another one of those ones. We have game, you have continue, uh, and you have time. And you have your D-pad down there. So yeah, th this is definitely one of my favorite game watches to own, especially since I own the box. Fortunately, um, part of that is just the plastic. There was a plastic film over the picture to kind of protect it. Um, but part of that is just the film, and part of that is unfortunately a little bit of damage to the top. But I mean, it's the game that matters the most. It's a really cool game, and I'm super happy uh, to own that. And that was number, again, number 59. Uh, there was Mario the Juggler, which was the final game and watch ever made if you don't include the ball... Um, the Ball re-release. Mario the Juggler is, I think, kind of like an updated version of Ball, which unfortunately I, I don't own either of them, and if you don't include the, re the uh, reproduction, but that is uh, a cool thing to note. This right here, though, was offered as a prize on Club Nintendo in North America, and I believe it was uh, there was uh, ways to get it on Club Nintendo in Europe and Japan as well, and it is a reproduction of the very first Game & Watch ever made, which was ball. And as you can see, as I mentioned, this isn't a widescreen one. The very first Game Watches had the buttons at the bottom for Game A, Game B, and Time, rather than on the top left. Uh, so this is pretty much an accurate reproduction of that. You are holding uh, at least, what was it called, you know, 30 years ago, ball, the very first installment of the Game & Watch series. So that's really cool to own. I like to consider that an actual Game & Watch just because it is so cool. Like, it's it just neat. Um, and I mean, it, it plays exactly like a normal Game & Watch, which is really, 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 really cool. Uh, so I'm really happy to own that. I mean, people complain about Club Nintendo, but it had some cool stuff as well. So you kind of change the focus so we can see a little bit better what's on the couch. There we go. So that, with all that said, is the 27 Game & Watches that I own. I hope you enjoyed having a look at all those. Um, please, if you have any Game & Watches, tell me about them down in the comments if you've made a video about them yourself. I'd love to hear about them. Game Watches are just such an interesting part of gaming history, uh, such an interesting part of Nintendo history, uh, and I absolutely love collecting them. I hope to get some more in the future as well. Uh, they are just really, really, really neat items. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> I hope that you, everybody enjoyed uh, seeing the ones that I have. And I mean, it's just like, you know, there's widescreen ones, there's multi-screen ones, there's versus system ones, there's panorama ones, there's ones that are variants that I don't even have here. Um, and like, it's just crazy, and they're so neat. And yeah, thanks for sticking it out. This is going to be a little bit of a long video, uh, but I hope that you enjoyed it. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed. Uh, hope you know, go, go and play some Game & Watch games if you, you know, either buy an actual Game & Watch or the Game & Watch Gallery games are absolutely awesome. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoyed that and hope to see you next time for something different. So thanks and see you later.